Welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me, Jessica McGovern, international multi-award winning portrait photographer. And today we're going to be talking about basically how to do hair masking, fur masking in 2023. And that's because I'm using Photoshop 2023. So we're kind of skipping ahead. It is currently December if you're joining us from the future. Hi there. Thanks so much, guys. I uh, just want to say really, really quickly, you can skip this bit if you want, um, but thanks so much for all of your support, outpouring of love and general acceptance of the extremely raw video that was released last week, which was episode one of The Naked Tog. I was well and truly naked in that and it was terrifying for me not to have it recorded, but to have it go out. And so thank you so much for that. If you want to watch that, go ahead and click the link above right now. But nobody's actually naked so don't look at it if you want that because you're not going to find it we're not that kind of channel okay we're just not we're just not that kind of channel if you're new here please do consider hitting the subscribe button hit the bell icon the bell icon will give you a notification every single time we release a youtube video that is every single week on a friday at 12 noon and we do all things photography but mainly you'll find animals here because i like them this is a five minute tip so let's put five minutes on the clock and get stuck in On the screen right now, you can see a picture of Pippi, okay? Now, I'm, I basically finished my edit with this, but there's one thing I want to add, and to do that, I'm going to need a mask, because if I go ahead and add a movable color layer, which is this one, if I go ahead and add that, if you don't know what that is, there's a video on how to make one above. Click on that right now, and it will fast forward you to that part of life, which is actually in the past. If I go ahead and add that gradient fill layer coming up from the top there, then it looks ridiculous. Like, don't ever do this. Just don't but I need a mask and so I wanted to talk to you about how to basically make masks work better for your life in 2023's version of Photoshop because things have changed guys and we need to address them. I literally have prepared some other raw files that I found earlier on in the wilderness of my raw file computer storage. All of these would need this treatment added to it if you're wanting to do something and isolate the subject right so if you're wanting to apply an effect or change the background even of a subject or clean up objects that go through the subject all of the above would need a mask right including this example right here so you might not be doing this exact thing but you're going to be needing a mask and therefore that's what we're talking about today so what do we need to do well first things first do not go into select and mask i don't want you to do it you're not allowed you don't go into select a mask right now you don't even select the subject right now oh no oh no you want to go up to photoshop preferences okay now in preferences you can just go general if you want or you can select the correct option from the list here we're going to go into general right with the preferences window open and visible we're going to head over to image processing now before i do this i need to say a big thank you to the individual who emailed me and it was an email and i know it was an email i just can't find the damn email somebody emailed me about this in October and I can't find the email. I, I can't find it to thank the person by name on here. I have looked everywhere. I'm so sorry if it was you and you sent me that email. You deserve a freaking medal and you need to write your name below this video right now so that I can identify you and send our gratitude. So we need to go to image processing and then where it says select subject processing, this thing will probably say device and in brackets quicker results we don't want quicker results we want goddamn better results so we're going to click into that i'm going to choose cloud which is detailed results it does take longer okay i'm just going to say that right now it takes longer but not that much longer so you just got to deal with it and then if you want to you can change this to more stable to make it even slower for you i'm not going to do that we're going to leave that on cloud and this on faster and we're going to click okay Alrighty, are we here? Are we with me? Next, we need to find a layer with an image on it, okay? We need the image itself, we need the subject to be visible. I'm just going to grab my background layer and I'm just going to duplicate it to get a image, right? We need an image layer, it can't be an effect. It can't be an adjustment, it must be the image. Then we're going to go all the way up here and we're going to choose select and we're going to do select a mask. No more selecting subjects. You can if you want, I'm not here to tell you off for that, but no more selecting subjects. Now, if you wanted to keep it on device and not use cloud, you could change it in this little droppy down button here, but we've done it on cloud, so it's always on cloud, so we don't need to do that. Okay, and then we're going to click select subject and watch by magic as the subject is selected. This isn't new, by the way, guys. This has been in Photoshop Select a Mask for a long time. 
Okay, so we have our subject popped out, okay? Make sure, as a note, I have not got sample or layer selected. I literally just want this one. And in terms of the selection that's been made, it's not the world's most horrendous thing I've ever seen. Actually, it's pretty damn good. And Pippi is the hardest dog, animal, thing in the entire world to mask. If you've done any of the edits on her, you will know that I speak the truth. Anyhow, next what we're gonna do, by the way, if your view is on weird stuff and not red, just choose overlay and set it to about 40%. You will thank me later, probably. Make sure we're using object aware in 99.9% .9 of cases. And you wanna make sure that you're grabbing hold of your refined edge brush over here. Now the settings for this in an ideal specific world are literally the default settings is the truth. They are the best, but you might wanna increase your hardness at times, okay? There might be times where you wanna increase your hardness up or whatever. I'm gonna do 49 because why not? And at this stage, we need to make sure that our brush size is adequate to be doing the subject we're doing. Now, if you have an area that's quite flat and straight and thin, use a smaller brush. If you are doing a fluffy area, use a larger brush. Do not use a freaking large brush, guys. It's never gonna do a good, good effect. It's just not good. Small brush. And then what we're gonna do is we're then gonna go ahead and starting from one area, remember where, we're gonna start to work up the edge. Now, we've got a fluffy bit here. We're gonna come out down the fluff. We're going up, we're going out down the fluff. We're going up, 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 and then we get this fluffy bit and now we're going out down all of the fluffs. I just keep going in all one brush stroke, but you don't have to do that if you really don't want to. So we're going like down the fluff, okay? That's important. Second important thing to remember about the selector mask tool is that you want to keep your crosshair, so the middle of that little circle that we can see working its way around the screen, you want to keep that little crosshair to the outside of the subject, okay? So we don't want to bring that like right in over the subject's floof. We want to keep that out on the outside, okay? So the brush must remain on the outer portion. I'm still holding this down and I feel like my finger might actually break in a minute. Anyway. So then, well, basically, I'm just going to speed up because the rest of it is just this all over again. Out, 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 out. Fluffy out, fluffy out, fluffy out. So we go through blah, 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 blah. As we do inside the legs, I'm not that fussed about right now. This section could do with a little bit of hand holding. If you have something where there's a, just a major error and it's horrendously disastrous, go ahead and grab on the little brush here. This little brush uses the same keyboard shortcuts as all of our other little brushes. There's loads of videos on keyboard shortcuts. There's two on my channel. If you wanna go and look at them, start with part one and that's linked above. So if we're do, doing the little brush here, we want a little bit of a softer brush, but not too soft. We're not going outside the lines. Do not go outside the lines. How many times do we have to say about that? Color inside the lines. I'm just gonna just dab, 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 add a little bit in there. I'm not going overboard, okay? I'm gonna trust the program. Then on our right hand side here we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to make sure that our settings look like mine for the most part and output it to a layer mask because I'm just going to nick that layer mask and put it where I need it anyway so I'm just going to output it to the layer mask. With that outputted to said layer mask right we can zoom out on the image and look at it in all of its beauty and gorgeousness and we can see that we still have our problem here because the mask is on a different layer. Now Photoshop basics we've got a video on that we also have an online course so if you're interested in that, then go ahead and have a look at that resource, which is available. We're gonna click, drag, and drop that mask onto our gradient fill layer. Okay, we're gonna do that. That is a done thing, we've done it. If you had a mask there already, there will be a pop-up that comes up and says, do you wanna replace the mask? Obviously the answer to that question is yes, so do that. Now we're gonna click on the mask and it's the wrong way round. Again, Photoshop basics, we've linked to it before. I'm gonna just invert that with Command I, another keyboard shortcut, and pop our little gradient layer, radial gradient, whatever we want to call it, down on the outside. So now if I zoom in on little Pippi, look how perfect this little mask is. It's looking really good. There's one area, which is this part here, that I'm not 100% on, so then I'm going to go in and touch up my mask. There's a recent video about that on the channel. I'll link to that above also. So realistically, that's it. That is the, the, the new major update to the stuff that we've been talking about in Photoshop. And now I'm happy with this image. I feel like that little pop of light really makes it and completes it. If you like this style of work, and this is something that you're looking to emulate with dogs in forests, then you're probably going to be interested in the online advanced outdoor canine portrait course. I still can't even say that. And if you're interested in general retouching wizardry, full edits and stuff, then 
like this, for example, then have a look at the premium membership. Okay, I'm not doing any more sales talks for the day. That's the update on Select and Mask. You make sure you go ahead and look at that cloud toggle thing. Some little tips dotted in there as well. Hopefully that was useful for you. If it was, please say so in the comments below because that really helps us in this world, in YouTube on the algorithm and also hitting that like button. So make sure you hit the like button. That would be great. And I'll see you next week for another five minute Friday. And I'm pretty sure next week is still a five minute Friday. And then we get into the festive spirit and do all sorts of stuff over Christmas. So I'll see you soon.